Connections. It's Monday, February 14th, 22, and another week begins. I'm glad you're here. We're going to shake off some of the uh, the rust here from, uh, from a long weekend and get started. We are continuing our journey and the study of our journey uh, this week. These are 13 steps based off the things that God has walked me through over the past almost 20 years. Many of these, these things that we talk about, especially as we get into the latter part of the list, are things that, that God has me walk through on a pretty regular basis. But last week, we spoke of the initial launch of the journey, and many of those steps came before the encounter with God. And so wanted to just spend a moment and review. In a couple of days, we'll, we'll pause and go through everything that we've covered thus far, just to, to meld them together more. But uh, from last week, valuable relationships, someone to point you in the right direction as a guide, then standing before God and and having them reconcile uh, very essential to any part of this journey. That once you break through that, God surrounds you with love and a new family. And then we got to last Friday of accepting authority, recognizing that there is, a, God will always be placing authorities over you. That's, that's a humbling experience. Uh, that is a, a great time of growth. But it requires a very different mindset than the mindset that perhaps you went into the journey with, certainly the one that we often adopt in the world. But submission and giving to one another from the lessons from Sunday, certainly carry over into this milestone. So today we're talking about plugging in, having a ministry to plug into and the importance of it. We talk about the church often of being a gathering of spectators. As if we are going to a sporting event, or we're going to the movies, we come, we sit on the pew, we're entertained for an hour and a half, we grab some a beverage and some food, and we, we head out into the rest of our day. That's a very superficial relationship with the church, it's a very superficial relationship with God, and it doesn't get us where we need to be. We must engage in the things of God. We spoke of it yesterday. If it can't just be words that we learn. You must be able to put your faith into action. And having places to plug in are those opportunities. They're the workshops of taking the things that you've just learned and applying them to real life situations. And it is healthy and it is essential to the growth of the church. One of the things that has affected us the most during the pandemic is the lack of places for you to plug into your church. The ministry has become much smaller, much easier to manage by less hands. And that's been a, a benefit during a very uncertain time. But it also robs us of the opportunity to plug in. So what we're looking to do as we emerge from the pandemic and take residence of our new home is talk about 
What kind of opportunities can we create for you to plug into ministry and plug into your church more readily? And so those are the conversations we're going to have very soon when we start back with our Wednesday service. Because we've recognized that there aren't enough places for you to plug in and therefore it's not necessarily your you're dragging your feet it's not that you want to be just a spectator there's just nothing available now there is a kind of a cautionary note on plugging in and we've I witnessed it in my early church experience, uh, and Denez had uh, not had a relationship with God through Jesus, and she was just coming into that relationship because she was mom and because she, you know, was the the right age. Almost immediately, she was thought to be somebody to be plugged into the children's ministry. Well, people serving the children's ministry watched over the children during service. So here's this woman who is coming into relationship with God for the very first time. And before she's even anchored herself in her relationship with God and been able to hear from God and be in God's presence, she's been plugged into a ministry that derails that. Now, we corrected it very quickly, and, and it has, has gone on to have a beautiful relationship with God. But that's one of the things that we have to, to recognize as a church, that plugging in isn't as important as being in God's presence. So when people are first coming in to relationship with God, very important that they are participating in service each week and not being removed from service to work behind the scenes. We've experienced this at Connections when we were doing breakfast and lunch service that we were creating the opportunity for people to work behind the scenes during service. And although it was always my heart to have everyone in service. Once you have that, that excuse, many people who were not ready to deal with the baggage that we talked about last week hit out in ministry. And that's not healthy for the church either. So very essential that we come up with ways to plug in but also make sure that people are getting what they need in God's presence. And that's why many of the things that we'll be looking towards for connections will be happening during the week. Because we have a, a church building that's available, you know, at least Monday through Friday and then Sunday service. So, there should be activities going on and places to plug in, and those can be, you know, anything that we can imagine. As long as it's serving others and therefore serving God. So what does that look like? Why is it so important to plug in? Well, Ecclesiastes puts it this way in Ecclesiastes 9.9. Enjoy life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun, all your meaningless days. For this is your lot in life and in your toilsome labor under the sun. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Very similar to a passage that we used yesterday. And that whatever we do, whatever we put our hands to, do it to honor God. Do it to, to honor our relationship with God through Jesus. The point of 
the author of Ecclesiastes, is God wants you to engage. And there are so many things out there asking for your attention. So many things that you could plug into that will pull you away from relationship with him. But there are things that you can plug into that will add. Plugging into relationship, as we spoke yesterday, is a way to add. And that came from a week ago when we talked about valuable relationships we don't want to lose. And then plugging into to worthwhile labor, things that we God can work in and help us grow in. Paul puts it this way in 2 Thessalonians 3, 7. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. When we are willing to plug in and go from being spectators to be engaged in ministry, we create those pathways for others to join in similar activity. One of the first places that I plugged in to church was the benevolence ministry. You can certainly see the, the early seed that God was planting and that I was, was working in the food pantry and helping people you know, that did not have groceries and you know, providing food and organizing shelves and just engaging in the labor of running a food pantry. And then we were also providing meals in one of the HUD neighborhoods and that required, you know, setting aside Saturdays for, for ministry. And so healthy places for me to plug in. And the interesting thing is once I was plugged in, then those ministries required, you know, additional hands to operate. All of a sudden, what was meant for me to, to have something to put my hands to was activity that engaged a good portion of the church. And that's the same thing that we'd like to duplicate at Connections. Idleness and being a spectator is something to be avoided because then we become just people who can recite God's word but don't live God's word. 2 Thessalonians 3.9 we did this not because we do not have the right to such help. God is clear that those who, who bring the gospel message, those who teach and preach, those who practice evangelism should be taken care of, have have an expectation of having a place to lay their head every night and food. But Paul saw that this was an opportunity to demonstrate to others how to engage. And he was willing to forego what he deserved for what would be healthy for those that he served. There are places that you can plug in currently. And one of the places you can plug in is when we begin having Wednesday service, make sure that you attend so that you can help shape other places as we expand this idea of going from spectator to servant. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for waking us this morning and giving us yet a new opportunity to plug in, to plug into you, Lord, to plug into your heart, to serve others as you have served us, to practice all of the things that you have spoken to us about. Now, these opportunities are available whether we have church ministries or not. You give us plenty of opportunities to be kind to others and to live our lives out loud. But you're also about making paths easier. Grateful, Lord, for all the paths that you created for me within the church. There are so many needs that need attending. And there's so many opportunities for us to grow ministry in multiple areas, Lord. Provide the hands that we need. We also, Lord, ask that we do it in a way that honors you and does not hinder the growth of those that are just coming into relationship with you. Ministry is important, but more important is the development of our hearts. Help us find our balance and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I think we got uh, most of the rust off, oiled up and ready to move out. See you back here tomorrow morning. Love you. Miss you. Till we see each other again. Please be good. Mm-hmm.